Alrighty, guys, it's your girl, Miss Lauren here, and we're going to continue with these Umar Johnson supporters. So remember, we stopped at the first lady. She said that she was a an event coordinator in Chester, and he was being very creepy. So we're going to continue um, this analysis here. Text message. I won't. All right, Queen. Have a blessed one. All right. Hey, I'm loving that right there, brothers and sisters. I'm loving that because the school is in Wilmington. So if I can organize Chester, Chester is a nice little satellite from Wilmington. We're going to organize Philly. Now I got to go organize Jersey. And then I got to organize Northern Maryland. God damn, you got to do all of that? And do you like that or do you like her? This is so weird. <laughs> Gonna make this thing pop. We're gonna make this thing pop. It's now or never. Not now or never. We can do this, y'all. We can do this. We can definitely do this. I'm working on a college store. Peace and love, sister. How you doing it? I'm doing amazing. Thank hey, you. Where you at in the world, guys? You at hey the world? girl. I'm in Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. Go right ahead, Queen. What's on your mind? Oh, God. Uh, so, first of all, um, I'm an activist and community advocate. And um, so, I'm about to go on tour to different urban cities, especially my hometown of Flint, Michigan. They need so much help there right now. Another activist. Another group that needs so much help. Y'all. Girl. Now, um, but my purpose and my goal is to do more uh, protection in our hoods and to build more generational wealth. Um, what? I have an amazing um, uh, program that we're about to do to build generational wealth. But what do you think is some of the most important things that we can do to not only protect um, our neighborhoods, but to... This is the shit I be talking about, y'all. Y'all really get up here and start asking a nigga that owes child support, a nigga that has trouble with seeing his children and being a father to his own children. And y'all get up here asking him questions about generational wealth. <laughs> Build generational wealth within the community um, to turn it into a community because we don't have communities. We have neighborhoods. That's why they call them hoods. Well, what? One, I think we have to accumulate wealth. So we She's drunk. Make major power moves. You know what I mean? We got to have a quarter of a million to go and buy that supermarket. We need to have a million to go and buy that car lot. You know what I mean? We got to start. What do you mean we just need the money? You're going to need to have some planning and some order first before we give any money up. This is his problem. He's great at speaking about the idea. There's no planning. There's no order. There's no paperwork. There's no nothing. Y'all, and she's an activist. So we can employ black folks. Not so power credit moves. Credit unions are critical. One of yeah. the best things you can do, start that credit union, influence other people to put their money in there, because that's how banks, that's how white folks are able to take over the neighborhood, because they go to their bank or they go to their credit union, and they let the credit union know, we about to do this in the name of white folks. We're going to take back the black ghetto in the name of white folks. Y'all are asking somebody right now for advice. He's giving advice on a credit union, something he's never done. He probably can't even get an account at a credit union because he owes child support. Y'all, you got to know the background of these people before y'all be <laughs> following these so the people. Say, wow, I can make a lot of money <laughs> off this. So don't give them a $5 million line of credit straight up. Go buy everything you're going to buy. A five buy. million. Anybody with a credit bank. card knows. So Come on now. We don't have enough banks and credit unions to do the same thing for ourselves. Everybody is working from a personal bank account. Personal bank accounts are not going to save black folks. We have to accumulate that money on a large scale inside of a credit union. So when you need... Y'all, I'm sorry to keep on pausing, but I have to let y'all know. He has collected millions of dollars from black people for over 10 years and he has done nothing that he's telling her stop taking constructive criticism from people that didn't construct anything girl and you looking like you really studying was that a paper and pen she got to y'all to make something happen you got a million dollars right there at your fingertips but do we not have to go through their systems in order to be approved, which is already... That was a pen. Yes, 
but the but the credit union though is a simpler <laughs> form of being able to save money. Banks are more difficult. Banks are much more difficult. The credit union is not girl. Difficult. Now we have a lot of black churches that have credit unions, but those black churches only use that credit union to do what? Make more money for the church, make more money for the pastor. Make more money to build a bigger church. We need credit unions. For Duh, the because that is their business. That is their business. That is what they do. That is what they get paid for. What they are on, they make their payroll for. You're doing the same exact thing as the church, but you didn't give anything back. Or the school that you told us you were going to do. Guys, listen. <laughs> we don't have a lot of credit unions in our community are named after the people. But they don't do anything for the people. If you what? Know what I'm because most of them are run by the who? The church. And the church isn't interested in black power. The church is only interested in black dollars. I mean, I personally think that the church should have to pay a tax to the hood. I think they should too. Because Why? the black church takes too much money away from black people and it doesn't give us anything in return. The church is just the like you. He orders. always gives advice that he should be giving to himself. Just like you, sir, you took these millions of dollars from black people, told us you was building a school, and now you sitting in the car talking, talking, giving advice. There ain't no school, ain't no lights in the school, ain't no keys. What is going on, y'all? We got to do better. We got to do much better. The church is a parasitic organization. Nobody wants to admit it because of our historical connection to Christianity in this country. But the black church is a parasitic organization. But I do want to say this to you. You're from Flint. How long have you been away from home? Out of Flint? I've been here uh, 15 years, but my entire family is still there. My mother is still there and, and taking showers in the water. And like, I want to throw, I wanna throw something home. at you. I want to throw something at you. I spoke in Flint one time, three years ago, Martin Luther King Day. Boys and Girls Club brought me out there. It was jam-packed. They've been asking for me to come back to Flint. I haven't been back. So since you have connections there, talk to your family. See if we can find a space where I can come back and do two things. Number one. You guys, these people invited him there. The place was packed. This was around the time when he was, you know, probably, I think this was when he was doing the Roland Martin interview and all of that about the school and everything like that. But y'all, all them people came to that and nobody wanted you to come back because they saw the bullshit. They seen right through the bullshit. They didn't invite you back. You don't know nobody there. You can't call nobody there. You need her to connect you to Flint after you've been there and you was a jam-packed building. Y'all is so slow. I want to hold the Black Parent Training for Michigan in Flint. Yes. I wanna, you follow me? No, Look, yes. Uh, Detroit, preach. She's really place, writing, so guys. In Flint, we'll do it in Flint. But even if we do the Black Parent Training in Detroit, I still want to do a community lecture in Flint. You follow me? So once you find a space, we can go ahead and choose a date, start pumping the word, and get the people on out there. Oh, I know. I, I already got a space. I got, I got a broom center right now. My boy uh, helps. Ooh, not your that's boy. Our, that's our biggest community center. And How many, community can, I community How many can I see today? Comfortably. Um, well, they have an auditorium. Okay. Um, Was it so, a whole school? It used to be a school or? Um, They've done some schools in there, but it's a community center where they where kids can come in and do boxing. Is, is it run by black folks? Absolutely. Because let me tell you why I asked you that. And this is for everybody's benefit who's listening. What an ignoramus. She can't give you a straight answer. And here you come, telling us why. Y'all, this shit is too much. I have a group of coons on YouTube. <laughs> and there's three of them in particular, and I don't want to give their name. But whenever I speak anywhere in the world for the past five years, they contact every single venue and try to force them to cancel my lectures and events. So the reason I asked you if it was black owned because the minute we start advertising that Dr. Umar is going to be at this community center, those Negroes are going to contact that center and they're going to try to get them to force a cancellation of the event. So we got to make sure we got people in that. And look at her. You're not asking why would they do that, Dr. Umar? What the heck? Why would they not want you there? You're just sitting there shaking your head, taking it all in. They don't want you there. They're calling to cancel it because you're doing fraudulent things. 
Hello, Dai. Center, who, when they get the phone call, get the email, they can shut that down. You know what I mean? He's not coming for that. He's coming for the people. These are just haters. I want you to know that because if they're not standing, the black folks, you know. Then what does that mean even mean? To cancel the event, and I don't want that to happen. Well, you ain't got to worry about that. The dude that running, he, he's formerly incarcerated, and he actually has an organization where he helps men. Oh, he jobs. loves that. And he is, he is the OG, not only in the hood, but in the nonprofit system. And, okay. and so you, we, we, we're cut right through that. So actually, I'm going to get on the phone with him today. And do you have a time frame of this? Uh, and so once you get on the phone with him and he says straight, get his Saturday and Sunday availability. Because what we'll probably do is do the training on Saturday, right? And do the lecture the very next day on Sunday afternoon after church. After you just told this other lady because on the, Pennsylvania the that you're going to do it. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So that's okay. 12 hours. Make sure he knows that. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then the next day, Saturday, for the lecture, we'll get in at 12 o'clock to set up. 2 o'clock to open the doors. Lecture from about 4 to 6 book signing and questions from 6 to 8 so Sunday 12 to 8 Saturday 8 to 8 really 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 guys he has a schedule for all of that and it's not even booked yet or nothing and you're giving a schedule for 8 to 8 12 to 8 taking up people day I bet you he has no intention of paying these people for giving up their weekend all day Saturday all day Sunday when they could be home with their family or at a real job. I just cannot. Okay, and are you thinking like February, March, April, anytime? Um, no. February is not out the question. See what the availability is. February is not out the question, but I'm thinking more springy though. I'm thinking more April, May ish. No but real answer. Saturday, because he might say, you know, Get as many Saturday, Sunday open. We want him back to back Saturday, Sunday, and see what he got available. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll work with him. We'll work with him. <laughs> we're going to work with him. I got everything available. Instead of me being doctor, psychologist, king, consciousness, big papa Umar, and giving you my schedule and my my hourly, you know what I mean, schedule for what are we going to do that day. I'm We leaving it up to you. For Dr. Umar to come talk. And for, to take up your whole Saturday and Sunday, I'm leaving it up to you. Like, what? Who runs business like that? Y'all really? And she, I just cannot. Which is good, because then I can just plug in. But if he gives you, like, eight Saturdays that he got, you can let me know those Saturdays, and then I'll see which ones I got available. Oh, you want to do multiple weeks? Say that again. You want to do multiple weeks? No, no, no. We're just going to do the one, but because uh, I'm always scheduling, I always got to have more than one date. Like, sometimes people will come back to me with one date. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm going to be in Africa that day. You know what I mean? So it's good to have. I'm on them flights. I got flewed out. No, you're supposed to have your schedule ready. Your agent or whoever, your assistant is supposed to be doing all of this. He has nobody willing to work for him. Be careful of people that have nobody willing to support them or help them. Why don't you have an assistant? Why isn't she on the phone or saying, get in contact with my assistant? Email this. You giving out your number up there. Talking about, is you available? Notice that he has a lot of Saturdays or a lot of Sundays, but we, he don't have a lot of Saturdays and Sundays together. That's fine because we can do the black parent training in Detroit, but still do that community lecture for uh, Flint. So even if he says, I got some Saturdays, but I ain't got no Sundays right with him. Well, I got some Sundays. I ain't got no Saturday. We can still mess with that. That just means the lecture will be on a different weekend than the training. What? So we can work with Yeah, he may be a good contact for Detroit as well. Okay. So, um, okay. so, so I'll get this together. And um, you said... Uh, oh, my God. Myself. Here we go, y'all. Yeah, you said... I already wrote it down. The ghetto. 215-989-9858. Correct. The ghetto. Correct, but I'm, I'll be in touch soon. Okay, love. Thank you. Not love. Oh. Right. See y'all, I just can't, but I just wanted to show y'all that, because at the end of the day, why? I don't get it. I just don't get it, guys. Check out my latest two videos. 
um, and enjoy. Okay, guys? Have a good one. I just can't. Girl, you really got up there talking about your boy that just got incarcerated. He's a perfect candidate. You really got up here and said that. Yo, I just cannot listen to these people and the shit that they say. All right, guys? I love you guys. We'll continue tomorrow. Have a great evening. I'm out.